Hello. Um, uh, the next session will be uh, this afternoon. Um, please welcome uh, Andrea Befra and uh, Antonio Ricci. Please welcome. All right. Uh, can you hear me fine? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, thanks for coming to this talk. My name is Adrien Defarge. I'm a developer at Job Maps. And my name is Antoine Rich. I created Cartoon Cité five years ago, and I've been working with SNCF Transilia uh, to map railway stations, basically the Greater Paris area, uh, since 2016. Yeah, so since last year, we've been working on pedestrian routing uh, inside and around train station. So first, I have a question for you. How many of you arrived uh, to Heidelberg by train? I know I did. Okay, so almost all of you. Nice. So maybe you'll be able to relate to the story I have for you. My story takes place in one of the biggest train stations of Paris. And a traveler just arrived at the train station. It's past midnight, she's tired, she's just thinking about going to sleep. But she also thought about booking a hotel just next to the train station. Well, one of the train stations, because there are multiple in, in Paris, and she chose the, the one at the other side of the city. So, bad luck, but she soon finds out that she has to take the night bus, the N02. And after a bit of looking around, she finds this. All right, so uh, bus number uh, N02, she has to take the exit number three or number four. All right, so, so far, so good. But she also finds this. Okay, it gets harder, right? Because for some people, reading a map can be very hard. But for big complex train station, it's even harder. And as you can probably uh, guess, it's, it can be very stressful. Um, yeah, so. Um, and the problem of guiding users through train stations is a very hard problem. And uh, one which um, SNCF and Transilien has been trying to, to solve for a long time. In 2016, uh, they started proposing an online map of all train stations um, of the region of Paris. So, uh, and of, of course, it's a, a map based on OSM. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, for there are a lot of train stations in, um, in the region. There are 300, uh, 380 of them. So it's not only about consuming the data, because you can't really expect to have a good quality uh, data of all train stations in the region. It's also about contributing. So we've had uh, Antoine and his team going to the train station to map them. Well, we've not been mapping all 388 uh, railway stations of the Greater Paris area. Some uh, were, were mapped by the community, obviously. But for some of the complex railway stations, uh, you could only have good data, good quality data, with uh, some uh, uh, quite extensive work. So what we've been doing for some of the most complex railway stations, such as the railway station of Paris, uh, we we are given uh, architect plans, which we use to create the structure of the multi-level railway stations. When we had no architect plans, we were walking into the station with a telemeter and taking measures and counting steps, as you can see on the, on the left. And, um, and also, when we've done that, we go into the station and take thousands of pictures, uh, a set of four pictures every four, four or five meters, with this device built by Stefan, which you can see here. And uh, with all these pictures, we don't need to go to the, in the station again to map. We got everything, all the information we need to create the data on JOSEN. So yeah, but it's a lot of work. But sadly, as we saw earlier, sometimes a map is just not enough. Um, especially in a world like ours, where we're so used to be guided everywhere. I don't know about you, but I had my phone out uh, with a uh, routing software to, to get here. And our users accept, uh, um, is, is, 
well, expect that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> they expect that. They expect to be guided from the time they, they get at the station to their destination. And routing is nothing new, right? There's been working solutions for a year or so. And also in the OSM ecosystem, as you probably know, we have very good working solutions. So we thought, why not, why not try that? And so we did. And here we have uh, an example with uh, OSRM. So, yeah, it's not going very well. We, we put our starting points uh, on the platform, and the software basic, basically tells us to teleport to the street above and then follow it to the destination. So, yeah, and it's, it's nothing against OSRM and, or any other routing software. They were just not designed for that. They were designed for outdoor, not indoor. So we knew that we had to develop something new to uh, propose this future to our user. So in the next 15 minutes, we're going to uh, go over the things we had to handle uh, to propose this feature. So the first thing we have to do is, well, if you uh, start from scratch, you have to handle the road, net the road networks. So the first thing that Adria imported into uh, the routing engine he wrote is uh, roads and uh, footways. And uh, it's quite interesting when you come to pedestrian routing to distinguish highways, well, linear things which are designed for pedestrians to walk on and, and roads which are shared between vehicles and pedestrians. And actually most of the roads on the, in, in OpenStreetMap map are roads designed for for, for vehicles and shared with, uh, with pedestrians. And there is a way to specify whether uh, there is a sidewalk on either side of a, of a road or a street, but suddenly only 1% of the highways have the sidewalk tag set up. This is not a lot, just 1%. And uh, if we want to guide pedestrians properly on the right side of the street, or take another street if there is no sidewalk, we need to have the sidewalk tag set up. So please mind adding the sidewalk tag to the roads you map. And the other important thing is to make sure that all ways are connected together. And we still find too many steps which are not connected to the roads or to the footways. And we also find elevators sitting in the air not connected to any footway. And this is okay for rendering, for, but this is no use for routing. And the same applies with uh, railway stations. Here you have a railway station, which is seen in uh, Josem, where we have the stairs, and uh, but this is no good for, for routing because there is no way to go from the street to the platform. What you need to do is to add some footways, and footways that go through the doors and uh, lead to the, uh, to the stairs and to the footbridge and to the platform and so on creating a graph effectively. So here you can see um, a tool we use internally. Um, so we can see the interiors of a train station and on top of that you can see uh, the world network we imported. So in, in purple you can see the streets and in green you have the pedestrian specific path and orange the, the stairs. And it's already usable. We can we can do routing with that. So if, uh, if our user gives us two coordinates, his starting point and his destination, then first we have to do an algorithm a bit like map matching. Uh, the idea is we take a coordinate and find the closest point in our graph, in our network. And once we have this coordinate, we can compute the actual route. So here we have it in um, the blue dots. So as you can see, it's working quite well, but it's for a small train station. How do you think it would work on this, on this train station, the one from earlier? Uh, it's not going to work, right? And, and what's missing here? We're actually missing the information about the floors, the, the levels. We don't know at which level our user is. And it's the same thing for the, the path in the, in the, the train station. So, yeah. so we've been adding uh, information about the levels for the inside of buildings and railway stations. 
And uh, there is now a well-established model in Opus Remap, which is a simple indoor tagging scheme. And this introduces a couple of tags, uh, one of which is a level tag, which enables you to specify uh, whether any thing inside a building, any equipment and what have you, is at a specific level. So it has to be a numerical value. And uh, you can assign it to footways. And also, when you have uh, stairs or elevators that enable you to change level, you just assign it a, numeric, uh, a multiple value or an interval. So we add this into the router. And back at the map, we can see that, well, on the streets, nothing changed. It's normal. The level tag only applies outdoors, not, uh, no, indoors, not outdoors. But inside the train station, uh, you can see the, the main building is at level zero. And the underground passage are uh, level minus one. And we can also have the, the stairs. OK. So let's go back to our user. And let's start with something simple. Uh, our user just arrived at the train station. So she's on the platform. And she wants to take a bus. So she has to, to go to the, the, train, the bus station, which is uh, just outside the train station. And then we try to compute the route. And we get this. So what went wrong here? What are we missing? So here, we actually uh, did the, the process of like, map matching. And, but we don't have the platforms. So it, it snaps onto the, onto the streets outside. And we could actually add the um, additional path um, on the platforms, uh, like uh, add ways with the, the highway tag. But it's not something you can find uh, in the field. So it's, it's against the, um, the guideline of OSM. So we decided against it. And we decided to use the polygons instead, the actual polygons of the platform. And for that, we use an algorithm which is called a visibility graph. So the, the idea of a visibility graph is you try to compute every possible segment in a polygon. And you, can, you get this kind of um, spider web, which you can use for routing like any other network you've imported from OS, OSM. So here we have an, an example with a path coming to, uh, to the, um, the area. And we're going to find the best possible path through the, the surface every time. Well, the drawbacks are that it takes a lot of processing power to, to pre-compute everything. You do, only, you do it only once, uh, but it still takes a lot of time. But for us, it, it's fine because we only import the area just around the train station and we don't have so many. So yeah, it's fine. And here you can see um, in a beautiful pink the, the platforms. And our problem from earlier is solved. Nice, right? But I don't know about you, but when I implemented this, I wasn't really satisfied because be able to, to do routing through platforms, it's really cool. I mean, we have to do it, right? But we want to do more. We want to, you know that those big train stations, there are open spaces everywhere. And you don't really have any specific path to follow, right? You can go from anywhere to anywhere. So, and we could actually use the same method for the indoor. So I mentioned a simple indoor tagging scheme. The other tag it introduces, and many of you know it, is an indoor tag which enables you to describe open spaces, uh, closed room or corridors. And, uh, and effectively, these are just uh, like, I mean, the, this model is really very much topological and very much suitable for area routing. So uh, considering them into the router was not such a big uh, issue. But this, when, we, you know, when you get to area routing, whether this is indoors or outdoors, you need to consider two concepts, which is the concept of barriers and crossing points. Uh, indoor, you can have walls, which are barriers, which are linear things you can't go through. You can have barriers outdoors as well, like fences. And, uh, and your router needs to consider them to either go around the barrier or cross the barrier. And, um, and, uh, and 
uh, cross the barrier, and the other concept that is a crossing point which you can go through, we can walk through a barrier. And, uh, and the, there is also this concept of uh, implicit barriers, I mean, things which like closed rooms, you don't map the walls, but the, implicitly the perimeter of the room is a barrier, so you need to consider that as well. So back uh, in our tool, uh, we can see that we have a few other rooms imported. It's actually a mix of uh, indoor equal room and indoor equal area. So once you've implemented uh, the platforms, it's not so hard to have other kind of um, areas because you just have to handle more tags and apply the, the same method. But you have to be careful about one thing is the, the concept of barrier. Otherwise, if you try to do routing without barriers, you get this. And there is a wall there, yeah. So I don't know any user which is able to go through walls, so. Um, we're not going to go over the implementation of barriers because yeah, the, this presentation is quite short. But yeah, if you want to do indoor routing through su surfaces, in most cases, you have to handle barriers. All right, so in the end, we're quite happy because um, at the start, we weren't even, even sure it was possible to do. But now we have a router which, which is able to do indoor routing, outdoor routing, and the connection between indoor and outdoor, which is quite important. And we're also able to do liner routing and also routing through surfaces and areas. And so this software is uh, actually uh, in production now um, in, uh, in an application uh, for uh, Transilien. And it actually covers 83, I think, train stations. So we're not, uh, we're not yet at the full 380 something train station of um, the region of Paris, but we're getting there. And yeah, it, it, well, it works great. So, no, we've talked a lot about um, how to compute the perfect route for our user, right? But this is not the only thing there is about guiding users. We also have to communicate the information to our user. And one thing we found was very good for this is the, um, the exits uh, that the user has to go through. For some users, you would just uh, give them the, the name of the exit, and they would be fine. They would just follow the sign and get to their destination. But we found that actually uh, describing the exits was more complicated than expected. Yeah, we've been careful uh, naming all exits because most of the time when you get out of a station, you get the name of the, road, the street it gets to, and uh, this is useful to give. You get that on the sign within the station. Sometimes you have several exits. But in some cases, it's not as simple as naming one exit because the exit of one station may well be the entrance of another station. In the pictures here, we actually see the same uh, line of turnstiles and uh, both are seen from different sides. On the left, you see it from the railway station going into the subway station, and on the right, this is the opposite. And uh, if you want to give instructions to pedestrians, you need to give it the proper name which is on the sign. And uh, this is actually the same sort of situation we have with a sign at crossroads. And in OpenStreetMap model, there is this relation called destination sign, which enables you to, to name signs with no ambiguity. So we decided to use that for exactly that situation for you know, pedestrian routing inside railway stations. And typically what we do when there is a crossing point which has two different names depending on which way you cross it. And we create two destination sign relations with a different destination name, but, and, but the same members. It's only the two and the from member which are swapped. And because we do area routing, effectively the from and two members may well be areas, not just lines. And a couple of weeks ago, I've been discussing this on the tagging list uh, because this was not documented, you could use it this way, and uh, that didn't seem to cause a problem to anyone talking on the list. So uh, I took an action to 
to give some example on the wiki somewhere. And uh, similarly, uh, for one-way exits, which you can have in a railway station and subway stations, and because we do area routing, in some cases, we need to create a relation, a restriction relation, to make sure the router doesn't guide you through a, an entrance, which is, not, which is just an exit, effectively. So we've been mapping precisely this 84 railway station where there is effectively a railway routing provided to the, to the passengers of Transilia. And uh, so we learned a lot of things doing this. And uh, we decided to create a, a wiki page to, to share all we learned into the, the better way to map uh, for pedestrian routing to enable routers to produce accurate and realistic routes. And this is not specific to that router that has been developed. This is just common sense and the experience we got from, uh, from using the data. So we, create, we created this uh, wiki page, which is uh, fairly long, and uh, we wrote it in English and French, and I uh, was pleased to see that the day I finished publishing it in English, that someone started to translate it in Spanish. And this was done in just a, a couple of days. The translation was completed. So you're welcome to translate it in German or Russian or what have you. And, uh, and if you have um, any question or anything to discuss, please uh, discuss it. This is, uh, this is a wiki, so it doesn't belong to me. And uh, it contains a number of uh, diagrams, up to 10 diagrams, giving examples on how to map properly or mistakes you want to avoid to enable uh, good guiding, good routing. And, uh, and uh, well, just the diagrams are available in SVG if you want to translate them. So this was a good project, but this is not finished, effectively. Uh, SNCF Transilia uh, is still working on extending this router uh, to enable routing for different profiles, people with disabilities or big luggages that you quite often have when you're traveling. And, uh, and also, uh, in order to improve the guiding instruction, there is a project which will be uh, presented just after this presentation by Frederick, which is how to identify landmarks in the OpenStreetMap data to give better indications to the pedestrians, to the users, to tell them, ah, Frederick will tell you all about it in a minute. Mm. Do you have any? Well, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Thanks again for Anthony and Adrian. Uh, do we have any question? Just a moment, please. Um, so in your example, um, routing from the platform area, um, does the uh, step leading to the platform actually need to be connected to the platform area? for you to be able to route it, or is it enough if the step ends inside the platform area? Oh yeah, so the, uh, the question is about the connection of the stairs to the platform and how exactly. you're able to yeah. route it. Okay, um, so what we do is we actually detect that the, stair, the end of the stairs is at the same level of, yeah, of, the, of the platform, and then when we generate the visibility graph, we uh, compute the segment with the to the to the point, and so we have we can route to the defense. There is a nice diagram in the guidelines. <laughs> okay, uh, just one remark about uh, your problem with the exits to, to uh, refer to them. There is a proposal by another famous railway station mapper, Roland Wagner, who proposes to have a worldwide unique uh, referencing scheme for any exit and doors. So I don't know what stage that proposal is at and where it's documented, but that's probably an idea to have a, uh, a worldwide system for these exits, exit numbering in, in a particular location then, okay. which would help uh, people internationally. Uh, okay. The question is, uh, you mentioned uh, destination relation, destination sign relation. Why do you need a relation for that? I mean, the destination is a property of the way leading away from the from the junction, so uh, I need I don't need the, the from lag because it, it always goes to the destination. 
Yeah, I'm not sure to have understood completely. It's uh, about the de destination sign. Uh, you were asking about the, uh, the members, right? Or, uh, why we have to use them like that? Um, e effectively, uh, this is... Uh, uh, maybe, or maybe with, with this one. In fact, these crossing points are similar to crossroads in a, in a road network. And you will not use them this way for, for roads because a car cannot just turn back uh, without, without turning around something. But for pedestrians, you, you can cross one point and uh, uh, one crossing point when you throw a barrier in any direction. And uh, the, the destination sign is really here to give you what sign you follow. And, uh, yeah, it's and, and depending on the direction you walk through the crossing point, you have a different sign. Does that answer the question? Or? Yeah, okay. And it's also a lot easier to use by software because earlier we, ha we had uh, another way to map that and it was uh, like kind of experimental, but it was uh, name exit and name entrance. But the problem, problem is sometimes the concept of entrance, entrance and exit is a bit complicated. Like, um, like this one where we have, on one way we have a railway station and the other side is subway station, so which is entrance, which is exit, it's kind of hard to, hard to say. Another question? Oh, we have one minute, please. Okay. Okay. So you mentioned for uh, one-way uh, st stair exits, you needed a, a restriction relation, basically. Uh, would that be doable with one-way? Maybe the picture was confusing, but there are exits which yeah. are one-way. You can just push the door to get out of the platform, for instance, and you don't have any, any line, effectively. You have the platform on one side, the pedestrian area on the other side, and this barrier and crossing point. And in order to say that this is exit only you, that you can walk, cannot walk from the outside of the station into, onto the platform. The only solution was to add a res restriction relation and the member are the platform and, and the pedestrian area. So what, just tagging one way on the, on the stairway wouldn't be enough? It's a, it's a way to define a one way on a, on a point, effectively. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So earlier we also had uh, we had another concept which was uh, uh, direction equal exit, mm. but it's effectively unusable from the routing point of view because you don't really know uh, which side is the exit effectively. So we, yeah, we need something which tells us this goes from this side to this side and that's what it does. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Adrian and Anthony to share information with us.